Good afternoon, my lords and fellow mourners. At this point in time, uh, the board is going to be received by the team which is led by the Honorable Principal Judge. And we shall request that as they wheel the body in, we shall request you to stand up. And then we shall be beginning the session. We request you to stand up as we receive the body.
I think we can take our seats. Let's take our seats. Let the court rise. Civil application number 77 of 2023 in the matter of an application for an order granting leave to the judiciary to commemorate the Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru, deceased for his distinguished services rendered to the judiciary. If it may please your lordships, the Honorable Chief Justice of the Republic of Uganda, your lordships, the Honorable Justices of the Supreme Court present, your lordships, the Honorable Justices of the Court of Appeal, Constitutional Court, of the Republic of Uganda, your lordships, the honorable judges of the High Court of the Republic of Uganda, your lordships, your lordship, the chairperson and members of the Judicial Service Commission, your worships, the chief registrar of the courts of judicature of the Republic of Uganda, to the judiciary. Your Worships, the Registrars and Magistrates present, the President of the Uganda Law Society, Senior Council and members of the Bar, the family of the late Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru, members of the Justice Law and Order Institutions, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Kafuzi Jackson Kargaba, 
the Deputy Attorney General of the Republic of Uganda for the applicant appearing together with Mr. Francis Atoke, the Solicitor General and Philip Mwaka, the co Acting Commissioner for Civil Litigation. The Lordships, Mr. Martin Diarohanga Asingwire, the Vice President of the Uganda Law Society, is for the respondent, appearing together with John Mary Mugisha, Senior Counsel, Isaac Atkunda, the Secretary to ULS, and Moses Okwalinga, the CEO, Uganda Law Society. Your Lordships, this application is brought under Article 134, 135, 136 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda and the Rules 2, 20, 43 and 44 of the Judicature Court of Appeal Rules and directions for orders that you be pleased to grant leave to the judicial officers and staff of the judiciary to commemorate the Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru, now deceased, for the distinguished service he rendered to the judiciary service of the Republic of Uganda. We make no request as to orders for costs. Your Lordships, this application is supported by an affidavit sworn by Her Worship Sarah Langa, the Chief Registrar of the Judiciary of the Republic of Uganda, who worked with the Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru for over a decade. The grounds. The Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru was a distinguished Justice of the Court of Appeal Constitutional Court of the Republic of Uganda who diligently served his country in this capacity from July 2013 to Tuesday 7th March 2023 when he passed on. The Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru joined the judiciary as the justice as a justice of the Court of Appeal Constitutional Court in July 2013 and through his dedicated and distinguished service participated in a number of precedent making decisions during his tenure on the bench. The Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru previously managed Kakuru and Company Advocates, a Kampala based law firm which he founded and established as a leading environmental law practice. A brief background about Justice, the Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru. Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru was born on the 11th of November 1958. The Honorable Just Justice Kenneth Kakuru was married to Miss Charity Nankunda Kakuru and has left three children Samantha, Trasse, and Rose. The Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru attained his primary education at Imbarara Junior School, completing in 1972. The Honorable Kenneth Kakuru obtained an East African Certificate of Education at Imbarara High School in 1976. The Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru obtained an East African Advanced Certificate of Education at Kololo Senior Secondary School in 1978. In 1982, the Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru was awarded a Bachelor of Laws degree from Makerere University with honors. And in 1983, he obtained a diploma in legal practice from the Law Development Center. 
the Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru was awarded a Master's of, em of Environment Law degree by Makerere University and in 2009 was awarded a Master's of Arts in Education, Planning and Development by Chambogo University. During his career path, the Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru established a service, established and served as Executive Director of Greenwatch Uganda, an environmental advocacy non-profit entity which pioneered environmental litigation and jurisprudence. He participated in a number of social and community activities including being a member of the Uganda Law Society, the East African Law Society, the International Bar Association, the Environmental Law Alliance Worldwide, the Environmental Action Network, the International Union for Conservation of Nature, among others. During his life of service, the Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru taught media law to postgraduate students at the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication, Makerere University. He was an associate professor at Grotius University School of Law at Uganda Pentecostal University. He was an external examiner at the Law Development Center. He was a member of Bishop Stewart University Council. He was a member of the Bible Society of Uganda. He was a founding director of public defenders engaged in public interest litigation and legal aid, among other numerous engagements. The Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru was a regular panelist who mentored law students, now attorneys, at the Makerere University Moot Court hosted by Makerere Law School, among numerous other engagements. The Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru has been a human rights defender par excellence, a great pioneer environmentalist, and a towering legal mind who served the bench with boundless dedication, utmost humility, and commitment for nearly a decade, and there is no doubt that the nation will miss his noble, noble service. It is right and befitting that the judiciary community, the legal fraternity, and the justice and order institutions be pleased to commemorate the life and the service of the Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru. My prayer that the, up, the, applic the applicant prays that this honorable court be pleased to grant the order as sought. I beg to submit. Your Lordships, <coughs> permit me to adopt the introduction and the protocol as has been read by the Land Deputy Attorney General. Permit me also, Your Lordships, to agree with the contents of the application, the law under which it is brought. the contents of the affidavit in support of the application that was sworn by the Land Chief Registrar, Her Worship Sarah Langa. <coughs> and permit me also, Your Lordships, to also agree with the submission presented by the Land Deputy Attorney General. Your Lordships, we concur with both the submissions and the prayers that have been made, 
and we wish to add that we have filed an affidavit in reply that has been sworn by Atkunda Isaac, the Honorary Secretary of the Uganda Law Society, and the same is on record. And the sum total is that the Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru, having served with an impeccable record throughout his close to a decade career of service in the judiciary as a Justice of the Court of Appeal and the Constitutional Court of the Republic of Uganda, and all the assertions made in his favor in this court as hard are both true and correct. Your Lordship prior to joining the judiciary, his Lordship had a distinguished career in private legal practice and was proudly a member of the Uganda Law Society for close to three decades, where he greatly contributed to the jurisprudence of this country and benefited the legal fraternity at large. Your Lordships, the forums of the advocates are awash with the testimonies and tributes from all the senior lawyers, from all the young lawyers, even from the students who've had a chance to interact with him. He is described as a disciplinarian who wanted the best out of the bar. He wanted all the advocates to take the court and its processes seriously and did not accept anything less than great. He interrogated the cases of the appellants, of the petitioners and the respondents alike, and he did not take anything less than a distinction. Permit me, your Lordship, to also say in one such cases, I reported to the court on an early morning with a bleeding nose, and I asked Honorable Basa Iwasuman to hold my brief and seek an adjournment before the court and a panel which he headed. His Lordship would not take uh, small excuses for an answer to anything. He sent the same Honorable Basa who was an emissary to where I was in the basement nursing with medical advice on how I can stop the bleeding within 10 minutes and gave me another 10 minutes to show up and argue my petition. Your Lordships, the advice worked. 10 minutes later, I showed up, and the first thing he said to me was, Asinguire, first take a seat. I have sent for a bottle of water for you. But whatever excuses you still have, I'm sure they've run out by now, and today we are going to work. Your Lordships, I presented the petition. Clearly, I had run out of the excuses. Your Lordships, he was not all tough, not all the time. He was very friendly and very fatherly. In our midst today is one of the lawyers by the, who goes by the name of Patrick Turinawe, seated somewhere here in the audience. He was raised by his Lordship straight from senior four. He was tutored and he was taken through the whole journey to become an advocate that he is as of today. And your Lordships, there is this and many other such stories that we could never make time to, 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 to tell. He will be remembered as forthright, bold, and, and a courageous justice who did not mince his words when he relayed his beliefs and his assessment. He will not be forgotten for the role he played in protecting the environment and thankfully for the legacy that he's left behind with Greenwatch. We extend our sincere condolences and join the land deputy attorney general and his team to pray that this court be pleased to grant leave the judicial officers and the staff of the judiciary and the entire legal fraternity to commemorate the Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru, now deceased, for the distinguished service he rendered to the judiciary and to the whole country at large. That is our humble prayer, my Lord. The Lordships, I'm glad.
and I appreciate counsel for the respondent has agreed with our application. I have nothing useful to add. This is the ruling of court. This application was brought by way of notes of motion under articles 134, 135, and 136 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda, rules 20, 43, and 44 of the Judicature Court of Appeal rules the elections for an order that leave be granted to the judicial officers and staff of the judiciary to commemorate Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru for the distinguished services he rendered to the judicial service of Uganda. The application is supported by an affidavit sworn on 9th March 2023 by Sala Langa Siu, the Chief Registrar of the Judiciary of the Republic of Uganda and Isaac Atukunda of the Office of the President, Uganda Law Society, Buye Wamala Kampala, filed an affidavit in reply, which essentially does not oppose the application. Having heard from the Honorable the Attorney General and the President of Uganda Law Society, and having perused the application, the affidavit in support and the affidavit in reply to the application, and having considered the submissions of both the Land Attorney General and Mr. Martin Yaruhanga, the court is satisfied that this is a fit and proper application for which leave should be granted to the judicial officers and staff of the judiciary to commemorate the life and contribution of Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru for the distinguished services he rendered to the people of Uganda during his meritorious service. The court makes no order as to costs. We order that the tributes may be given in honor of Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru. Signed. Richard Butera, Deputy Chief Justice, Geoffrey Chidiawire, Court, Justice of the Court of Appeal, Justice Frederick Egonda Ntende, Justice of the Court of Appeal, Helen Obula, Justice of the Court of Appeal, and Catherine Bamgemere, Justice of the Court of Appeal. We may proceed with the dispute. May we have tribute from the President, Uganda Judicial Officers Association.
my lord the deputy chief justice uh, the justices of court of supreme court court of appeal high court the legal fraternity the the protocol is big allow me my lord to adopt the protocol as laid down by the the honorable the deputy attorney general and adopted by the senior council and on the side of the law society. Dear mourners, uh, it is indeed sad, as we all know. Uh, first and foremost, we are happy that uh, a decision has been taken for us to commemorate and uh, talk about our dear friend. You know, uh, KK, we have very few KK. Uh, when, when in the judiciary you are a friend, people refer you by, they don't give you a full name. They find people saying KK. Now KK, for me I was honored uh, <coughs> in my itinerary in the judiciary at the lower bench uh, at a level of a registrar before becoming a judge, the deceased was the last judge I served in the circuit while conducting a criminal session in Fort Potro. And indeed, it is the deceased who received the message for my appointment, and he came jumping from the Fort Potro High Court. He said, judge, I said, I looked around to look for a judge. He had received information before I got it, I think in the social media. So he came. And those of you who knew the deceased, yes, if he was your friend, he was indeed your friend. For the entire time I worked in the Court of Appeal as a registrar there, the deceased walked my chamber, walked his. But very few would find us and say, Tadeo. Because they feared to go to his chambers. The majority, the advocates are here. If you had no serious business to conduct in his chambers, he had no, he had no time for you. And then he would hold my hand. We walked to, you know, in that trade building, there was a famous uh, restaurant. For the public, I would walk with him, would eat from there, lunch, and walk back to court. So the rumors notwithstanding of what he was, because of his openness, which we all know, I don't know how he missed being a Muchiga. He spoke like a Muchiga. He told you his mind, and he would never call a spoon a big spade, a, a spade a big, a spoon a big spade. If it is a spade, it is what? And of course, a lot can be said, but uh, as a president of Ujoa, the attributes which you will never forget is that he was a backlog fighter in the judiciary. When we talk about this elephant called backlog, Yes, uh, if you gave him a matter to hear it, he would give it 100% attention. This one I can testify. 100% energy. And he would ensure the decisions are delivered on time. Actually, uh, uh, some of us uh, uh, at our level, when we see that next level on how the teamwork plays. This decision would fight colleagues as a register, of course. <laughs> if, if I put out a cause list and one of their lordships happened to be sick and you went to tell him, your panelist is sick, you'd see him displeased. Of course, it's not God, we all fall sick. He would be displeased because there would be no business that day. To reconstitute that panel, he would practically walk to the deputy chief justice, now the current 
Chief Justice, my lord, this gentleman would walk knocking on each chamber to ensure that the panel is reorganized and uh, things are done in a proper manner. I pretended to be an analyst as a registrar, but I would find Kakuru in the corridors walking to the registries to check who is late. So he practically practiced in Boa. Management by walking around the famous uh, uh, thing which we know in management. He practiced it. So for me, he made my work very easy in the court of appeal. He would manage a bit of my docket. And I found it very nice to work with this gentleman. And so we now pay tribute to him. But as we do this, what have we learned as the existing judicial officers? A backlog fighter, very transparent. He will write his judgment and sign it, and the whole public will get it immediately. This business of, I cannot find this judgment, no. Judgment finished. Some of us have been uh, infected, but uh, I think for good reasons. But it is my sincere hope and prayers that colleagues in the judiciary, that as we speak now in this era, the work is simply too much. My Lord, the Honorable Chief Justice has always uh, told the public the work is simply too much. This judge lying here, uh, those of us who didn't know, he even was working online where you seek. People didn't know he was working online. So in that building, I do walk upstairs to go and look for him. You tell the judge, where is the judge? He's working at home. The next day, you see a judgment signed by KK. Very few actually were surprised. They didn't know the judge was sick because he worked per last. And so that is the gentleman we are talking about. And we can only pay back by all of us running to our desks and trying to dust these files, as we have always done, more energized to pay him back by administering justice in the spirit of the Constitution. That is, first hearing of these matters, so that we can serve the nation by giving quick justice, quick dispensation of justice, for the entire country to enjoy in memory of the deceased Justice Kakuru, a backlog fighter. I can't say much. The rest we all know. And uh, I beg that you allow me to say may we walk in his legacy, most especially some of us who are not very senior in the judiciary, may we pick his tributes and walk like the way he worked. He was an embodiment of a lot of knowledge. You would pick a phone call and consult him on a matter. You did not need to read his books on environmental law because he had it on his fingertips. You see, a judge of court of appeal making a phone call to another in the lower court, because they are very busy, he would pick a call. I'm a resident judge in Imbarara, but he would want to find out what is that judgment you have delivered, and he would be interested in knowing the jurisprudence therein. Top-down consultation. He was uh, the gentleman. So allow me, my Lord uh, Deputy Chief, just to stop here and say, may his soul rest in internal peace as we commence this commemoration of his life on earth. I thank you so much. May God bless you. May God bless me. Thank you.
my Lord the Chief Justice, my Lord the Deputy Chief Justice, and convener of this special sitting of the Court of Appeal, Constitutional Court. The family of the late Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru, uh, I see Charity Kakuru and the rest of the members of the family. This is our eulogy. On Tuesday, 7th March, 2023, we were shaken to receive the news of the passing of the Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru, Justice of the Court of Appeal, Constitutional Court. On behalf of the Deputy Chairperson, the Honorable Lady Justice Faith Monda, who is not with us, members who are here, officers and staff of the Judicial Service Commission, and on my own behalf, I extend our deep and profound condolences upon the passing of our colleague to his wife, Charity Kakuru, children, relatives, in-laws, and friends. I extend in the same measure our deep and profound condolences to your Lordship, the Chief Justice, the du Deputy Chief Justice, the Principal Judge, the Lordships and uh, the ju Justices and Judges of the Upper Bench and their Worships of the Lower Bench upon the passing of our colleague and friend. In August 2021, Justice Kakuru called me for an appointment which I obliged. He came over and informed me that he had been diagnosed with a terminal health condition and that he had been advised to take measures to stay away from hectic work conditions. He presented to me the medical notes relating to this condition. On account of this condition, he had taken a decision to apply for early retirement and wanted to be advised upon how he would go about it. Then he profoundly asserted that he did not want to be responsible for the underperformance of the Court of Appeal, Constitutional Court, on account of his medical condition and further that he did not want to be paid salary for work he was unable now to do as a member of a collegiate court. This was profound. No one had come during the tenure of our commission and made this accountability statement. No one. I tried to persuade him not to take a, a hasty decision and to give it time. He, however, appeared fully resigned to the situation he was facing and did not accommodate my overtures on this matter. We went through the provisions of Article 144, 1A of the Constitution that provides that a judicial officer may retire at any time after attaining age of 60 years and shall vacate his or her office in case of a justice of the Court of Appeal, Constitutional Court, on attaining, on attaining the age 70. In a couple of days, he sent to me a copy of his letter seeking leave from the President, His Excellency the President, for early retirement addressed through the Chief Justice. For the Commission, therefore, the enduring legacy of the Honorable Justice Kakuru, as demonstrated in the position he had taken on this matter, is his being fully prepared to be accountable to the judiciary, his institution, the people of Uganda from whom judicial power is derived, and who pay the taxes that cover our emoluments. This is the enduring legacy.
for the optimum utilization of public resources, of performance, time management, and value for money in the operations of the Court of Appeal Constitutional Court. We have no doubt that this attribute of accountability runs through every facet of the public and private life of Justice Kakuru. We find judicial officers very quick to apply the shield of independence, but throw all impediments when the demands for accountability are, are questioned. This is the, 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 the challenge we are facing as a commission. Quick to assert independence, but put, putting impediments when the demand for accountability is raised. But not so with the Honorable Justice Kakuru. He was seeing the impacts of his sickness and he was taking actions in advance saying, I will not be the excuse. We have seen instances of absenteeism of judicial officers. This is a problem, despite the generous emoluments being paid by the taxpayer. We have seen instances of judicial officers taking leave and extending approved leave periods beyond what was approved. They take what, they have been, uh, what has been approved and go beyond without permission. And yet they want to be paid for work not done. So this is the enduring attribute and legacy. It is a big challenge. The other attribute of Justice Kakuru, he was a maverick judge. He was independent, fiercely independent and proudly self-driven. But this attribute did not, however, impair the demands of collegiality that is the hallmark of appellate courts. Some have had challenges, but for him, he was independent, yes, but accountable and observed collegiality. Respected collegiality. We, ha we had no issues. Finally, the Honorable Justice Kakuru was a committed champion of environmental justice and helped enrich our jurisprudence on environmental law. He was a founder of Green Watch Uganda chapter and instrumental in taking on public interest litigation on matters of environmental conservation. I did approach him when I was, prepare, uh, was writing my thesis on environmental laws relating to the management of plastic waste, and he was enthusiastic. He was enthusiastic because he, he wanted ju uh, judges and judicial officers to embrace him by environmental law test hypotheses and, 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 and so that we, 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 body, we build a cluster of judicial officers with environmental law expertise. For the entire length of his service, the Honorable Deputy Chief Justice, in the judiciary of 10 years, he had a clean record at the commission. There is no report, not, not even a whisper, in conclusion, therefore, the Commission commends the Honorable Justice Kakuru for his service and contribution. May his standard of performance be emulated, and may his soul rest in peaceful repose. I thank you for God and my country. My Lord, the principal judge. My Lord, the Honorable the Chief Justice, my Lord, the Honorable the Deputy Chief Justice, the Honorable Deputy Attorney General, my Lords, the Justices and Judges of the Courts of Judicature, 
my lord, the chairperson and members of the Judicial Service Commission, the honorable members of the Judiciary Council, the bereaved family, relatives and friends, your worships present, members of the bar present, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. Today we mourn the passing of a candid, courageous and maverick icon of Uganda's administration of justice, who, until the time of his demise, has served as a valued member of the Court of Appeal since his appointment on July 4th, 2013. Uh, not long ago, we lost the Honorable Justice of Pierre Wery, an astute environmentalist. We've lost Honorable Justice Kakuru, a renowned environmentalist. It appears death is robbing us of those who protect the environment. The late Honorable Justice Kakuru was a Lord Don, an invariable human rights defender, and an ardent environmental activist who leaves behind a phenomenal record of fearless and dedicated service to the judiciary and the nation at large. The late Justice Kenneth Kakuru's activism for many years in environmental and constitutional law has immensely enriched both environmental law and constitutional jurisprudence in Uganda, East Africa, and the entire African continent in general. As you know, a judge never dies because he lives through his decisions. His passion for the rule of law, democracy, and constitutionalism in Uganda was unquestionable. His love for the judiciary and his country was immense. He was a man of such distinction. The late Kenneth Kakuru was a true embodiment of honesty and judicial integrity, whose life example will certainly inspire many. The volumes of his professional work and tangible footprints will forever live in the minds of the judiciary and the entire League of Fraternity. His legacy, his legacy will live on. At a personal level, when I was the head of the, the Mbarara High Court circuit, he I think this is where he was a unique character. He came three times at the circuit in a casual dress. And no one could know that he had been at the court. So three times. And uh, the first time, that's when he came to my chambers and told me that I've, I've been investigating how you work. And then, uh, so then I asked him, so what is the feedback? Then he told me that they have told me that you'll die on your desk because you overwork. So we shared that attribute of being workaholics. Then he said, I'm not the best person to advise you on that because I will also die on my own. <laughs> so you can, you can see. Uh, and then he would, of course, walk around in the, you know, in the chambers where and the clerks never knew him. So one of the clerks was not lucky when he became a victim of his discovery that he's corrupt. <laughs> yeah, so, and, and, and of course, quite often he has been coming to my chambers, particularly when he was sick. He, he passed by. And I think we will definitely miss him. Uh, his legacy will live on. I, I, you know, sometimes when someone dies, we, we start, you know, saying all sorts of good things. But with certainty, I can tell you that Kakuru loved his work, and he died doing his work. <laughs> and that is the accountability we must give to the public. The public pays taxes, they pay us salaries, we must show them that we deserve the salaries we earn. As we celebrate his life and contributions, I also condole with his family, relatives, friends, and the judiciary, 
and the entire nation for the loss of a great citizen. We shall certainly join you to see him off. I've been to his home. He, uh, uh, what I mentioned, actually, he one time came and picked me from the high court, took me to his home. And I had lunch with him over the weekend. And then, uh, I mean, uh, several times, uh, I, I, I think in the interest of time, I'm not going to go into details. So may his soul rest in eternal peace until we meet again. May we listen to a representative of the family. In the interest of time, allow me to adopt the protocol led by the Honorable Deputy Attorney General. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Samantha Tkunda Kakuru Mwesigwa. Thank you all for taking the time to gather here to honor a man I was so privileged to call Daddy. Make no mistake, I did address him and honored him and respected him in his capacity as Honorable Justice Kakuru. Often times when I would write him a note or an email and the communication was official, to me he was not daddy at that point. He was Justice Kakuru. So this afternoon I'll speak of him in his capacity as Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru. Before I eulogize Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru, allow me to make a correction concerning his profile. He was married to the late Winnie Inchiza Kakuru, and together he had three children, Samantha, myself, Tracy, and Rose. He was married to Mrs. Charity Nankunda Kakuru, and together they, had three ch they have three children, Ruth Joy Ampire Kakuru, and twin sons, Eriakim Nate Namara Kakuru, and Joshua Ethan Narinda Kakuru. I'll continue with my eulogy. Justice Kakuru was a brilliant mind. He loved the law, but was very much aware of the origin of the law. In one of our conversations while I was still a law student, he told me that the entire law concept was specifically crafted to benefit the elite, the wealthy, and suppress the poor. To ensure that the two classes were kept divided, well, he always had his theories, and sometimes I frowned upon them because I liked the knowledge and the wisdom. With that in mind, and having a father, my grandfather, the late Reverend Eria Kim Kamjanduzi, who outrightly spoke against injustice. Justice Kakuru made it his lifetime goal to mostly re represent the underdogs. He could have chosen otherwise. He could have chosen otherwise, corporate and commercial law, banking, that would have earned him big bucks. But that wasn't the way he desired to practice law. He stood out as a human rights activist, creating jurisprudence in the area of constitutional law, human rights, and environmental law, as you've heard this afternoon. So it's no surprise that the law society comprised of his colleagues was instrumental in fronting his name to join the bench. As Justice of the Court of Appeal, God gave him the opportunity to decide cases, allowing him to put to his good, brilliant mind using the law to promote justice. The past two days, social media has buzzed with testimonies from students he taught and mentored, the legal fraternity, those who practiced alongside him in his advocacy days, the clients he represented, and the list goes on all mentioning who he was and what he stood for. And I'm so glad that this afternoon it has been reaffirmed. He loved what he did, he loved his work as a justice. During court vacation, he would organize all his pending files and use his vacation to complete all pending cases. 
like we have heard, he was a backlog fighter. About two weeks ago, while he was sick and frail in Nairobi, he asked me to help him. There was a pending judgment that he hadn't finished, but he was too frail to do it. So he called me and said, I'm going to dictate to you this judgment. Please type it out for me. That was how much he loved his job, and that was the last judgment he wrote. He took it very, serious, very seriously. When he got sick, he was concerned that he wouldn't be able to keep up with the demand of his work, so he submitted his resignation, as you've heard. He later explained to us that after speaking with the Honorable Chief Justice, he was convinced to continue doing his work, that it would be a way of therapy for his mind, so that he could take his mind off his condition. I believe that he did. He left his mark and so much more. He was yet to offer, but here we are. He loved his country and served his country well. I'd like to thank the legal fraternity, the judiciary, friends, relatives, his family, in a special way, his wife, Auntie Charity, for taking good care of him through his sickness. For oh God and my country. Thank you. This is tribute by the Deputy Chief Justice on behalf of the Court of Appeal. We have been working with just Kenneth Kakuru at the Court of Appeal since July 2013. He was hard working and totally committed to his duty as a justice of the Court of Appeal. He always arrived at the court early and was ready for court at 9.30 a.m. He kept time and expected everybody to do the same. He had been in private practice for a long time before coming to the judiciary. He used his experience in private practice to mentor advocates who came before us in the Court of Appeal. He closely observed how an advocate was dressed in court. If he was not properly attired, he was quick to tell the advocate that the court could not see him. The advocate would find his way out. He was keen to ensure that advocates prepared their pleadings properly. He, was, he would critique the pleadings and point out whatever was wrong. Justice Kakulu was efficient in handling his judicial work. He prepared his judgments in time. He was a good researcher, and his judgments told this story very well. He has left a wealth of judicial presidents, presidents behind him. The Court of Appeal is a courageous court since we handle our work as panels. Justice Kakuru was a justice that made it easy for each of us to work with. He enjoyed teamwork. He would draft his judgments quickly and would respond to drafts from other justices quickly. He was always organizing the panel he sat on to ensure that the cases they handled were concluded in time. Justice Kakulu exemplified service above self. Clear examples are these. He bought with his own money shelves for the criminal registry for court fines. He bought with his own money trawlers, trolleys to facilitate staff moving bulk court files from registries to courtrooms and to justice chambers. In doing all this, Justice Kenneth Kakuru exceeded his call of duty. 
Just Kenneth Kakuru also served as a court administrator, assisting the Deputy Chief Justice to manage the day-to-day -day activities of the court. During his time as administrator, the Court of Appeal developed a strategy to improve case disposal, greatly cutting down on existing case backlog. We also recall that when Justice Kenneth Kakuru was not well, he continued to work even when he was on a hospital bed. He did his last full civil session in November 2022 as head of the panel, and he did this session via Zoom from his home when he was sick. Early on in May 2022, Whilst Justice Kakuru was ill in a hospital in Washington, Seattle, USA, he followed the session on election petition appeals keenly and was always giving his views. We always, as a court, found it easy to work with Justice Kenneth Kakuru because he told everybody the truth and that he did every day and on each occasion. He always told us the truth, whether we agreed or not. But his opinion was offered, and often his opinion was given first. This was a great attribute to Justice Kenneth Kakuru. If you disagreed with him early in the morning, you would share lunch in the afternoon and continue to be friends. He carried no grudges, no ill feelings and no malice. He was always fair and frank in a principled manner. Just Kakuru worked hard for the welfare of our staff, the support staff. He was clear that their entitlements should be provided to them and to them in time. We have lost the brilliant justice of the Court of Appeal. We believe that his legacy, the legacy he has left will go on. His sound, informative, and educative opinions will continue to enrich our jurisprudence. We shall definitely miss him. Fare thee well. I now take the opportunity to invite the Chief Justice to pay tribute on behalf of the judiciary. My Lord, the Honorable Deputy Chief Justice, the Learned Attorney General, the Honorable the Principal Judge, Justices of the Supreme Court, Justices of the Court of Appeal, the Honorable Judge, Judges of the High Court, the Chairperson and Members of the Judicial Service Commission, the Heads of Development Partners Organization present, the Secretary to the Judiciary, he worship the Chief Registrar of the Judiciary, he worships the Registrars and Magistrates, the President of Uganda Law Society and distinguished members of the Bar, the various categories of public officers and civil servants present, the Judiciary Administration and Support Staff, and more importantly, the widow, the family and friends of the late Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru, fellow mourners. In, in a spate of just under three months, the cruel hand of death has snatched two senior judicial officers from us who were in service the same cruel hand also snatched 
from us, one of our own who had retired, most specifically Lady Justice Elizabeth Nahamia. We lost Honorable Justice Ruby Aweri Opio in December, and uh, today we are celebrating the life of yet another senior member of the bench, Justice Kenneth Kakoro. I can only ask the Lord God to receive Justice Kakoro in eternal glory. We've been informed Justice Kakoro passed on in Aga Khan Hospital in Nairobi, Tuesday, 7th of March, 2023, two days ago, to be more specific. The deceased, Justice, had suffered from cancer and had received special treatment for over two years, both within Uganda and abroad. And, and let, let, let me clarify and uh, dwell on what my Lord, the Chair of Judicial Service Commission, uh, presented here. It is true, Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru wrote a letter to the President through me seeking early retirement on account of his ill health. When he brought it to me, I said, Kenneth, isn't this ill-considered? The you I know, should you retire now, you will die sooner than you would have died if you go home. Because you'll be redundant, and you and redundancy cannot be in the same line. He said, well, I've thought about it, I've discussed with family, I made a decision not to forward that letter to the president. I called the president. I don't know whether I called him or he had called me on something. I told his excellency that Honorable Justice Kakuru had applied through me to him, seeking early retirement, but I had declined to forward the letter to him. He wanted to know why. I gave him the reason I'd given to Honorable Justice Kakuru but I added, I think, the one which was more important, the one which informed my decision not to forward this letter to the president. For the reasons everybody has said, it's a man who loved this work and gave his all to serve this country. And when he told me, I, I think I'd known earlier that it was cancer, to think that he would go home having to treat himself of cancer. I knew Kenneth would sell everything he had on earth in an attempt to remain alive. And I thought that was very unfair. So I said, he's been, he, he was at the time a serving judicial officer. I would not be complicit to his living service and having to fend for himself. So I did not forward the letter. And because of this, we did everything else that you think of with uh, the permanent secretary, uh, secretary to the judiciary, to ensure that we, get, we got funds to have Justice Kakuru treated in the best cancer hospitals in the world. <clears throat> to drive my point home, that to have allowed him to go home would have left his family members destitute. The government of Uganda through the judiciary spent over 800 million shillings to treat Justice Kenneth Kakuru. He would not have managed this. He would not have managed this. When he came back from Seattle, he looked boisterous. He was good, in good spirit, 
That's when I told him, well, I never, I never sent your letter to the president, and I told the president I was not sending it to him. And then he said, thank you. I think, I think he wrote another letter, yes, withdrawing the other one. And then I didn't know his, his situation had wasn't. So when I received the information that he had passed on, I was surprised. Because he looked good and never came back to me to say, you know, my situation is bad. But well, that's, that's the world. That's the way of life. So when he came back, hope had been restored. And we in the judiciary family had come to believe that he would be with us till retirement. But as we know, God has plans which we do not understand. His are not ours. Just as Kenneth Kakuru has unexpectedly left us to be with the Lord. We can only pray that the Almighty God be pleased to accept his soul as his servant in eternal glory. The judiciary, the legal fraternity, and the country at large, and, and, and these many members have said, have lost a fair-minded judicial officer. His laudable decade-long service in the judiciary was characterized by sound output and tireless commitment to duty. This everybody else was spoken as said. When I became Deputy Chief Justice, I appointed him to be in charge of case management in the Court of Appeal and to oversee the functionality of the registries at the Court of Appeal. He was able to bring order and help the court to substantially fight case backlog, which, as you know, is endemic in the judiciary. We shall greatly miss you, my Lord Kenneth, now, Kenneth Kakuru, we are told when he was born, how he went to school, I'm not repeating it here now, uh, how he, uh, he served the country in the private sector before joining the judiciary. What we will forever remember him for, most especially, and again this has been said, is tough character. You could even say he was stubborn. He called a spoon a spoon, not a small spade. He was an exemplary leader and a resilient manager who moved things and produced results before demanding the same from other members of the team. The difference with him is this. He did not ask you to do what he was not doing. He led by example. He had an indomitable willpower, was incorruptible, and spoke his mind loud and clear. However, and I've not heard people say this, I've, uh, I think the daughter almost said it, but, but not quite. This is the, what I'm about to say is the Kenneth Kakuru I came to know. Beneath this veneer of toughness and uh, indomitable willpower lay a social, kind-hearted, loving, and humorous persona. People did not know Kenneth was so humorous. The other thing which I've not heard people say here, he would flare up very easily. You know, quick to flare up. And until you knew him, it would scare you. <laughs> but I think, my Lord, the Deputy Chief Justice made reference to this. You'd flare up now, and five minutes later, Kenneth is laughing with you. You know, it's, for you, you are still mewling over this. For him, yes. <clears throat> he entertained or held no grudge. He didn't believe in making enemies. 
So the, the, the moment you understood Kenneth Kakuru was one of the most wonderful people to have around. And that also contributed to my declining to see him go. People, people think Kenneth was difficult. Yes, it was difficult, but also very understanding, a paradox. Very understanding. You respect your position as we did respect his. He was a nice man. The moment you understood who he truly was, then you knew you were in the company of someone really nice. Not the flaring and uh, the person who asserted his position with vigor and, uh, you know, appearing to be very uncompromising. Beneath that veneer, as I've said, was a person to have as a friend. Allow me to humbly thank all of you who have extended the hand to the judiciary and to the family of Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru in one way or the other. I am deeply touched and humbled by your messages of condolences to the judiciary and family of our fallen colleague. And more so, but you are coming today here in such large numbers to commiserate with us and also to honor one of our great judicial officers at this unfortunate moment of deep sorrow. Once again, I thank you, the distinguished mourners, for joining us to comfort us at this hour of grief and to afford solace to the bereaved family when they most need. Let me say this of my judicial sisters and brothers, especially those of us who are in the late afternoon of our lives. I haven't reached the evening, just, just late afternoon. <laughs> Kenneth was in the early afternoon. Let us take very, very seriously the need to have frequent, comprehensive examination, medical examination. We lead a sedentary life. From home in the morning you come to office. In the evening, and uh, we all leave offices around six, and you go home. If you carry out a test on these judicial officers, many of them, including the Chief Justice, will be having a problem with vitamin D. Because we never enjoy the sunshine. So my plea to all of us, let us take medical examination comprehensive very, very seriously. With these terminal ailments, we are told if it is discovered in time, it can be averted. The problem with us, and we are all victims of this failing, is that when we begin to suffer pain, that's when we now go to find out what the cause of the pain is. My very humble but firm plea is, let us take our lives very seriously. And, and when you are going, please get a fellow judicial, bring a, a fellow judicial officer along. You never know. That act alone might save your life and save the life of your colleague whom you've taken along. I continue to pray that the good Lord judges our brother Kenneth with a fair mind and with a merciful heart. I also pray that he continues to comfort the orphans and the widow during the eternal absence of justice, Kenneth Kakuro. I have the hope that you will continue to support the bereaved family during this trying time and thereafter. 
May God bless you all and may the Lord God take the soul of Honorable Justice Kakuro into his eternal presence. Thank you. Your Lordships, it's my humble prayer that today's proceedings be made part of the record of this honorable court and a copy of the same be given to the family of the deceased Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru. I beg you. Deputy President of the Society. My Lord, my Lords, we concur with the prayer of the Attorney General that the proceedings of this day, of this day including the eulogies, be included and made part of the permanent record of the court and a copy be distributed to the family. This is the ruling of court. The proceedings of today paying tribute to Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru shall be made a public record of the Court of Appeal, a copy of the proceedings of this court today shall be provided to the family. Thank you very much. Chief Registrar, any administrative announcements? My Lord, the Honorable the Chief Justice of the Republic of Uganda, my Lord, the Honorable the Deputy Chief Justice, all of us gathered here, the protocols were already laid. Let me request all of us to appreciate the Honorable the Deputy Chief Justice and the entire Court of Appeal. Thank you and thank you very much. This brings us to the end of the court session. My Lord, the Honorable the Chief Justice, just to quickly scan for you the different personalities who have graced this occasion without a particular order of the protocol, my Lord. Before you, we have the Honorable the Deputy Attorney General who came together with the Solicitor General. And uh, my Lord, besides you, we have the Honorable the Principal Judge and the Honorable Chair of the Judicial Service Commission who came with a couple of members. I request the members of the commission present to stand. Uh, Ms. Nora and uh, Mr. Vitaravejo, thank you very much. My Lord Chief Justice, we also have Justices of the Supreme Court right behind you. My Lord, you're most welcome. The extended uh, arm of the Court of Appeal, my Lord, they are on this side. Thank you very much. My Lord, the judges of the High Court are here. 
also behind you and spilling over to the side. Thank you so much for coming. My Lord, we have uh, retired justices. Justice Jotham uh, joined us. My Lord, you're most welcome. Together with uh, Justice Remy Kasule, who I would request that in one minute I just read his message. He said, uh, Justice Kakuro was an exemplary member of the profession. He was thorough in his work as he made research and he ensured that his decisions would promote justice, especially to the ordinary people, and he could not be compromised in any way. Thank you so much, my Lord, for that. My Lord, the Chief Justice, the Law Society came in big number, led by the Vice President and all the other members of the bar, I would request you to stand up for recognition. Thank you, and thank you so much. My Lord, the Chief Justice, the Judiciary Council is represented and I humbly request the members of the Council to please stand for recognition. My Lord, in the Council we have the Honorable the DPP, Dr. P.S. You are one of, you wear many hats, you're one of the Council members but you're the Permanent Secretary and Secretary to Judiciary here. We also have Ms. Dan Subuga who represents the public uh, on the Judicial uh, Council. We have the lower bench, the registrars and the magistrates. I would also request you to stand. Thank you for honoring uh, his lordship. Thank you and thank you so much, uh, my lord. Lastly and most important uh, is the family. The family, we have a number of members, the widow and the children would humbly request you to stand for recognition so that the Chief Justice can see the family members present. Thank you, thank you so much. My Lord Chief Justice, we have um, the senior administrators. I saw a couple of them around of the judiciary. I request us to stand as well so that we are seen I saw Dr. Bal Samoya, principal economist, uh, you're most welcome. Members of the fourth estate, we are here, and our staff, we thank you, and thank you very much. Just as I bring this to a close, and with you bearing with me, knowing that in such a gathering you could, your eye could miss, but not miss everybody, we have the Honorable Raf Ochan. You're most welcome. Thank you, and thank you so much. My Lord, the Chief Justice, this brings us to a close, and just to announce that after this, we have a vigil at the home of Justice Kakuru, and tomorrow, nine o'clock, we will be at All Saints for the funeral service, and thereafter, Barrio will be in Barara on Saturday. Thank you once again all for coming. May the Lord uh, receive his Lordship in glory. Thank you very much. We shall wait for the court and then we shall all rise. Let's all rise. The court shall go in recess.
It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Cause it's all about you. It's all about you. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. Cause it's all about you. It's all.